Let us read from the first book of Samuel, in chapter 16. Then the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If so, Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was, when they came, that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance, or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen this. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Let me also read from chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle, and were gathered together at Sokoth, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Sokoth and Azekah in Ephes the men. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they camped in the valley of Eli and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath, from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze. And he had bronze greaves on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed six hundred shekels, and the shield and the shield bearer went before him. And he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man, that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and who had eight sons. And the man was old, advanced in years, in the days of Saul. The three older sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah.
David was the youngest, and the, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself forty days, morning and evening. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves, and run to your brothers at the camp. And carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand, and see how your brothers fare, and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exemption in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab's his oldest brother heard when he spoke to the man, and Eliab's anger was arose against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another, and said the same thing. And this people answered him as the first ones did, and when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth, and when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard, and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Amen. We see a person, David, who, as we see him in the Bible, God gives him um, a special attention. He um, talks about him. Many uh, pages have been written about this man, about this man of God. The Holy Spirit used him. Since out of his mouth came words of God which are written down and today we can read them. Even in the New Testament, the Apostles make remembrance uh, of this man, David, who was a, a small and significant people in the, in, in the, among the people 
uh, of God, but he had something special that God liked, and it was for which in the New Testament God commands him. He does this in the New Testament. He, God commands him for many things, and in New uh, but in the New Testament he commands him especially for one thing, and that is his heart. He says that I have found a man. He says I have found David, uh, son of Jesse, a man that is according to my heart. So God is looking upon the earth and especially amongst the believers, men and women, to find people who were who are faithful according to the heart of God. These are the kind of people that um, God is looking for so that he may do his work, so that he may uh, save people, so that God may be glorified uh, on this earth and amongst people and amongst the nations. This kind of people he's looking for. He's looking for a man according to his heart who will do all his wills. And God um, completes this by saying that the heart of this man was and um, were always a desire to do the, the will of God. So he had the word of God, which he laid him in the word of God. He, he cared that the word of God may be in his heart, that he may study and meditate on it. Uh, not abandon it, not take it away from his uh, eyes, but he took care that he may see it daily and uh, study it so that he may do it in his life. And that way, this young man... Um, he was a young man at that time, uh, wh whom later God made him to be a king, so that this man may do always what God desired. Either this was um, something that was written in the word of God, or um, this was the voice of the Holy Spirit that guided him. This is amazing. And this is not something that he desired from the moment that God anointed him, but this is something that he had from a young age, even when he was younger, as we see him, as we see him here to to testify the the and speak about the experiences that he has. But let's take it from the beginning. We'll see some characteristics of David in this passage of the, the Bible that has to do with his heart, and which is very important, brethren, that we may ask and seek of them, because we are the last church. And only those who are pure in heart will see God. Those who are pure in heart will see the Lord. And each one of us, separately, should cleanse our hearts. Of course the Lord should cleanse our heart. But I should know what my heart has, has within me so that I may take to the Lord to cleanse it. Isn't it so? For example, I had a, a problem with my breathing. I went to the doctor to check it out and he... He found out what was the problem. He told me what I should do. I went through a sur surgeon, an operation, so everything was fixed. But I, first of all, I have to, to realize, uh, to understand that I have a problem. For another example, I should go to the doctor to listen what's the problem and ask from the doctor the healing. That's what, what we people do about um, uh, this earthly matters. But how much more should we care about the spiritual things? But I should care and go to the Lord and say, Lord, where do you see that my heart is dirty? I want you to make it to be clear and pure. I want my heart to be like David so that I take part into the rapture of the church which is coming. So here Samuel made a commandment uh, uh, since Saul is um, a king whom God has rejected. So Samuel made it uh, uh, received the commandment to go to the son, uh, to the house of Jesse, um, and God would show him whom he would anoint as a king. That's how um, it was done back at that time. The prophet of God had to anoint him. And that's what had uh, happened with Samuel. And that's what ha had to happen with um, David. So Samuel, um, being obedient to the word of God, though he ha has been quite reserved uh, because of Samuel, I just read what happened. He said that to um, Elijah uh, to Jesse he said that I want all of your family to stand right before me and Jesse had he had eight sons but he called just the seven he didn't call David David was uh, the one who kept the sheep of his father but he didn't call him so he called all the uh, the the first seven and now Samuel 
um, being given prayers, starts to ask from God to reveal to him who he who he is. And uh, David was even rejected by his own father, whom I believe he loved him. As a child of God, he did what he had to do. He kept the sheep, the flock. God has called all the others, uh, all of his uh, brothers. But his father didn't wait for him. He rejected him in his heart. And his father probably think that David didn't have to be there. Then Samuel, then um, each one passed by before Samuel, uh, Abinadab, Sama, one by one they passed before Samuel. And uh, Eliab, the firstborn, said, and the Lord asked him, is this the firstborn? And uh, Samuel was sure that he would be this one. But because uh, though um, Samuel is the prophet of God, many times he sees as a man. But God tells him, "No, do not look at the outward appearance or of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as a man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart." So God refused him. So the firstborn son was in his plans, but God rejected him. And this is a danger, brethren, that we, the people of God, face, that the Lord one day may refuse us. This is a fear that we have. And it is something that it should rule into our hearts. We should have this fear um, so that the Lord won't refuse us when the day of the Lord will come. Uh, because our heart will be dirty. Because I fight against... Uh, the brethren or go against the word or because I keep a sin into my life and they caress it into my life or because even worse I have a sin and I even bring it into the people of God our heart should fear brethren because God is graceful of course he is graceful but also uh, but God also refuses and that's what the word of God shows us here that this firstborn of this man God refused him but he was, though he was strong and he was tall um, before the eyes of man, and God uh, shows us today something that God sees the heart, but the man sees the outward appearance. The, the thing is that, do I see the heart or not? Because God sees my heart, but do I see my own heart? And I will come back again to what I said in the beginning, that we should give our heart to the Lord, blessed is the man, is the, the believer who when he sees his heart to be defiled right away he takes it to the Lord. This man is blessed because uh, to him his sins are forgiven and this is not counted to him as mm, as a sin. And this is uh, this are something that happens in the Old Testament. Blessed is the one not who hasn't sinned but the one who realizes who has his senses trained to see his mistakes, to see his dirty heart and take it to the Lord and the Lord right away cleanses it we have the blood of Jesus Christ who cleanses us from all sin so why should I keep my heart dirty why should I keep my heart um, defiled um, and not take it uh, but but instead we should take it right away to the Lord to cleanse but many times we see other people's hearts which in fact we don't see it because uh, we can do that but at sometimes we think that uh, we may see the heart of our brother. The word of God doesn't say this though. Only God can do that. And each one should test his own heart. And uh, the spirit that we have within us. We cannot see another person's heart. That's why many times we fall into mistakes. We see the, uh, the, the appearance. Uh, this is another mistake that we might do. And let our hearts um, get defiled. We might see something that is happening into the church. And say... Oh, that's what this means. Oh, that's what is happening. Or the other. We might see a brother to, to put a label and say that he, this is a sinner. Or the other one is this and the other one is that. And then we put labels to our brethren, to our brothers. Uh, though God doesn't want us to do that because God might have forgiven him. Uh, and even he might have never sinned. I remember once um, God showed me that it was... 
I could see from afar the cross and I could see three crosses. It was uh, the Lord and the two um, others. So it was from too far, but I couldn't see it. I was, I found myself at the time that Christ was living. And as I was seeing um, the two men on the left and on the right of Christ, especially the one who was on the right, I was saying that this man is very sinful. I, I could see the, the one that was on the right. He, he should be killed. He cannot be saved. There's no way. Um, and indeed, brethren, back at that time, when the Romans were about to crucify something, this was a terrible thing. He didn't just steal something in order to crucify him. Indeed, these two people that were crucified along with Christ were sinful. But that moment that I was saying this thing and uh, s looking at this from afar, he, the Lord zoomed it and he took me, brought me right um, a below from the cross. And the Lord um, showed me the the communi the talk that they had remember me when you come into your kingdom and the Lord told him today you will be with me in paradise and I was from afar I was thinking that he could never be saved and at that moment the Lord was talking to him saying to him that today you will be with me in paradise how many times brethren we make a mistake by seeing the appearance and the Lord what wants to do is to turn our hearts to the other way the Lord sees the heart. Let us turn inside of us and look our own hearts, and not what, and not what appears to be. Let us let these things um, to others, to the people of the world. But what we'll do is to look what the Lord says, and how God commands people. So God said that I have refused Him, and after all of. Uh, Jesus' son passed by, and none of them was. Um, Samuel found himself in a dead end. Have you ever f fallen to a dead end? But uh, there, there's no dead end for for the Lord because if you trust Him, then the Lord will open a way. So, since uh, uh, after God told him that you will find a a son, uh, um, uh, the right um, son, but he said that there is. Another one, but I have him. I had him to keep the flock. So he asked him to go and call him. And when he arrived, he said, uh, "The Lord told him, arise and anoint him, because that's the one." And then the Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit um, went upon him from that day and forward. And this is very important, brethren. It's the Holy Spirit is very important. And the Lord has anointed us with the Holy Spirit. He has filled us with the Holy Spirit. The Word of God, brethren, uh, as we, we all know from the day of Pentecost, He filled His church with His Holy Spirit. He gave um, gifts, and the Lord gives uh, gives gifts. Uh, the Holy Spirit, which will give us um, the power to continue. And remember that the things that are uh, impossible... Um, God does them with the Holy Spirit. These days we celebrate Christmas and we say that the Virgin has received a son. But what did the Lord say about the Virgin? Um, the angel, he said that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the mighty will overshadow you. So when the Holy Spirit will come upon us and will overshadow us, then we become different persons. Then we change it. It's not us, but it's the character of Christ within us, brethren. And then we do not uh, boast to say that it's us, but it's the Lord who is within us. For that reason, it is very important, brethren, that we may ask the Holy Spirit, that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk in the path of the Lord. So time passed by and the time came that Goliath appeared in the sin. He was a great fighter uh, of the Philistines. Um, uh, so before this fighter, all people, all the fighters of Israel, um, stepped back from the king to the last soldier. Everyone had stepped back. Isn't this a terrible thing? A great difficulty came um, um, upon the people of God and everyone stepped back. 
Neither the king had the courage. We're talking about the people of God, about the uh, the people of the Lord. Nevertheless, they stepped back, and though this man, he was a giant, as the word of God tells us, he used to come out, and not only was he strong, but he also defiled the armies of the Lord. And in verse um, 10, it says that when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So they just heard only that they would hear him. They would become fearful. Only with the hearing of the news of, or of the many events or that are happening, do we get fearful, brethren? We have the Holy Spirit within us. We have the Lord, brethren. We have the Lord who will give us the strength uh, to fight this battle. With whom? With this fighter, with this Philistine, with the problems, with the difficulties. Further down, uh, in verse 24, it says that, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Only that they would hear about him, they would fled away. They fled away. What has happened when sometimes we haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit because we haven't uh, been in prayer or when our heart is um, um, dirty, then fear has come into our hearts. And the Christian realizes that the problems are so big and so uh, strong that they cannot make it and then we hide behind rocks and and we're trying to find the solution um, we're trying to, to get a solution from um, a mountain but the uh, David sh cries out where will my help come from and says that my help will come from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth that's where my help will come from so this man David After his father asked him to go and see his brethren in the battle, they were their brethren were in the battle, but they were uh, hiding his three eldest uh, brothers. And David, as an obedient uh, son to his father, he didn't uh, refuse to go, but he went. He didn't thought to say, "What my father? He refused me when it was a time for me to to be anointed as a king." But he didn't accept this thing about his father. But on the contrary, he continued to obey him. He continued to be obedient to the will of God and to the commandments that God had given him. To be obedient to his father. And not just that, but uh, because the Lord had given him uh, some few sheep. He said that he left him to keep her. And he went in order to go and do what his father had told him to do. So he didn't abandon the flock just like that, but he let them in, a, in a, a specific point for someone to keep them. So that's what the Lord has given us. We continue and keep it and take care of it and work it. And we work it. And suddenly David appeared looking for his brother and to, to give him um, bread and water and as he stood there, this mighty man appeared, and as we uh, said before, all uh, of them, all of the men, uh, fled to hide in in holes and caves. And when David heard these words, brethren, because he was full of the spirit of God, he started saying, "Who is that man who defies the armies of the Lord?" He didn't say, now, do you know something? I'm the anointed of the Lord. Uh, Samuel the prophet came to me and and the day before he anointed me, um, before my brethren and my um, father, one day I will become king. That's what it meant that he he'd been anointed with oil. He didn't keep this into our, his heart, brethren. But at all times he was a humble and quiet man who what he saw, what he cared about is that the armies of the Lord wouldn't be um, re defiled. Who is the one 
who, what is that sin will come and terrify the people of God though sin uh, it's to the point that it's coming to its fullness though sin and worldliness are knocking the doors of the churches all of the churches what is this sin that will make us fearful uh, fear when we stand in the word of God with a clear heart full of the Holy Spirit that's why brethren God wants us to take heart and after we cleanse our heart after we um, sanctify it then we should continue the obedience of the Word of God as David did we should be filled from this other kind of spirit that God wants us um, so that we may fight our personal battles and the church battles against the this world against the devil and of the worldly mindset and so after he found his brother um, he said to his brother now who is this man who defiles the armies of the Lord instead of hearing go a good word a sweet word from his brother Eliab told him I know your pride and the um, insolence of your heart of course you came down to see the battle now what was that where it, where did he came from it's not is it not enough that I uh, give the battles of the Lord that I'm humble and that I keep the sheep instead of um, of the others it's not enough that that God has anointed me to be king and he comes my brother and he responds to me in this ways but what did David do he said he he pretended that he didn't hear him and he stepped away he excused him in his heart now what kind of heart is this May the Lord uh, give us this kind of heart. When something happens with a brother or a sister, when someone um, kicks us a little bit and we're ready to shout, um, and a stature um, rises up in our heart which is called pride and arrogance, um, instead of humbling ourselves and um, and forget what our brother said because whoever is humble he excuses and whoever loves excuses and we know this very well especially the fathers and the mothers they know this from the children uh, because we excuse them when we love them in that manner we should excuse our brethren whoever has come and harmed us or many times we think that uh, because brethren I'm convinced I'm convinced uh, the through the Bible that most of the times I make mistakes when I see someone um, when I uh, realize that someone is talking to me the wrong way I'm wrong could it be that God would show me how many times I've done this as well but I do not remember these things I've forgotten them but I remember instead how this brother and sister has talked to me and that's what I keep into my heart but David had this kind of heart brethren that he uh, deleted everything a brother uh, said at some point that it doesn't matter brethren write them down on the snow that is um, it snows you can write it down on the snow but the moment that it snows it's uh, snowing write it down as many times as you want but afterwards you won't find it again that's how our heart should be it should be white like snow so that's how uh, David walks because he has nothing uh, more in his heart he, he doesn't fight he, um, his father or his brethren the only thing that he wants is for the name of the Lord to be praised do we want this brethren that's what we want in a personal level we want this to happen in our um, life in our church that the name of the Lord may be praised so he appeared before the king himself he appeared before he appeared before Saul of course and um, Saul uh, was speechless seeing a, a, a young child um, he, he said how you being a young child will fight this man and now David starts to tell what God has done into his life and that's what we should um, think into our lives when a thought will come to know you won't make it you are not going to heaven don't you see how many mistakes have done in the promises that have come to your life 
no, you, you can go. This is not for you. Perhaps these are for others. But that moment, brethren, we should lift up a banner. We should lift up um, the things that the Lord has done into our lives. Because the Lord has done things into our lives. And the first and the most important is that He has written our name in the book of life. And this is the greatest of all. This covers all the rest. If we would take all in a row what the Lord has done into our life, only and only if we start by saying that He has written our name in the book of life. This is, um, has covered all the rest. And then we um, get strong in faith and the Holy Spirit reminds us. Of, and um, He reminded um, His experiences um, to David. He said that your servant, when I was younger, and I used to tend the sheep, then a bear and a lion appeared, and they took a lamb. And so what? Why didn't you let the lamb? You had many more. But he went after the lion and the bear, and he said that I delivered the sheep, the lamb, from the, the mouth of the, of the lion. Is it possible for a young child to deliver um, a lamp from a lion, the bear? Yes, everything is possible to him who believes. And God, what is impossible, he will do them. That's to, uh, what we believe. We believe in this kind of God, not um, that he may do the things that we... He'll do the things that are even impossible that we cannot even think about them and not only did he deliver the lamb but he says that you know if the wolf goes after a lamb um, and you try to get it then the wolf will come back to you but um, do not be afraid because you're not alone and it says that your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And David says that this should be our testimony. That the Lord who has delivered me from the lion and from the bear. He is the one who will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. God who has written your name in the book of life. God who has took, brought you out from the bonds of sin and delivered you. God who so many times has um, acted into your life though we don't remember it he is the one who will deliver you now from the lion and the bear he is the one who will deliver us brethren and he will save us for his for his eternal kingdom but our heart should be clean brethren our heart should be pure before the Lord so the moment came for this man to fight with Goliath himself he had a good, a clean heart. He didn't fight against um, against his father and his brethren, but he kept his heart pure. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He held the word of God and he obeyed in him according to the word that he had. And the moment came to fight against sin. So he uh, he fought this fight, and we know that he came out as a victor with the weapons that he had. He had the Word of God. He had the Holy Spirit. That's how we'll fight against sin. With the things that we have, we'll fight against sin. Do not be afraid whether you are young or older, whether you are a man or woman. Fight the fight of the Lord with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. But go into this battle. Do not stand back. Do not try to find a hole in a cave to hid, hide yourself. Fight the battle of the Lord. Appear. Come to the church. Stay to the church. Come and in, 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 in uh, taking part in this fellowship and receiving the teachings and having fellowship with the brethren. Do not hide yourself you it's not you who can do it but the lord who dwells within you can do that and for that reason when he went and fought he said you are coming with a spear and but and with earthly powers but i come against you in the name of the lord of hosts this name brethren has great power and we should always use it the name of the lord of hosts the Lord, the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. And we should always say this. 
Christ save me. Uh, the name of the Lord is a uh, strong for foothold, and we should say this every time in our battles with our sin, every time, every day, the battles that we give in you know, this life, and the battles that we give to submit this heart, which cannot be submitted easily. May the Lord bless you. Amen.